Jackson. New pitch. Swing and a drive down the left field line. Did he keep it fair? Yeah! 2-0. The newest long-term fixture in the Chicago Cubs organization is shortstop Dansby Swanson. To be honest, I thought he was heading back to Atlanta, and we'll get into why he signed with the Cubs. Trust me, you want to stick around to hear about why he signed. But how did he get to this point? James Dansby Swanson was born in Kennesaw, Georgia, to two former Troy University athletes. His father played baseball, and his mother played basketball and tennis. And she was actually inducted into the Troy University Sports Hall of Fame in 2020. Having grown up in Georgia, Dansby was naturally an Atlanta Braves fan, and he was a two-sport athlete at Marietta High School, and he went by the nickname Three Point Swanson. But he did also play baseball in high school and was selected by the Colorado Rockies in the 38th round of the 2012 MLB Draft. He would forego signing with the Rockies and instead decided to go play at Vanderbilt University. Unfortunately, his freshman year was limited to just 11 games played as he both broke a bone in his foot and then when he returned from that injury, suffered a torn labrum in his shoulder, which the following offseason he would have surgery to repair. Dansby would be healthy and ready to go for the 2014 season, although he would be playing at second base this year, as shortstop was currently filled by Vince Conde, who actually went on to win the College Gold Glove in 2014 at shortstop. This Vanderbilt team was stacked full of talent with guys like Walker Buehler, Carson Fulmer, of course Dansby Swanson, and Brian Reynolds all on this team. Dansby would lead the team in batting average, runs scored, doubles, and stolen bases in the regular season, and although they were eliminated from the SEC tournament, they'd still make it to the National Championship Series. They would end up beating Virginia in the College World Series and take home Vanderbilt's first ever national title for baseball. Dansby would also be named the College World Series Most Outstanding Player and was named to the All-Tournament team. In 2015, Dansby had the opportunity to play shortstop as Conde graduated. Between 2014 and 2015, Dansby made 117 consecutive starts for Vanderbilt before he came down with an illness in April and missed his first game during that span. Dansby was even better this year at the plate as he batted 335 with 15 home runs compared to three home runs the year before, and he finished with a 1.046 OPS. He was a semifinalist for the Dick Hauser Trophy, which is given to the best college baseball player in the US, was a finalist for the Golden Spikes Award, and he ended up winning the Brooks Wallace Award, which was given to the best college shortstop in the country. His buddy Carson Fulmer on the left winning some hardware for National Pitcher of the Year as well. On top of all this, the Commodores made it back to the College World Series, coming up just shy, second place to Virginia, who was the team that they beat the year before. Dansby would forego his senior year and head into the MLB draft, ranked by many as the top overall prospect. The Arizona Diamondbacks select Dansby Swanson, a shortstop from Vanderbilt University. With Dansby going 1-1, he became the first college shortstop to be drafted first overall since the San Diego Padres took Bill Elman back in 1974. Before Swanson was assigned to one of the minor league affiliates of the Diamondbacks, he was hit in the face by a fastball from pitching prospect Yoan Lopez, suffering a concussion and needing 14 stitches on the side of his mouth. Man, imagine getting hit in the face, but also imagine the feeling of hitting a guy in the face, especially your number one overall pick that year. Eventually, Swanson would get assigned to the Hillsboro Hops for the rest of the year. The 3-2 pitch, high fly ball, deep to left. This could be number one. It's gone like the cool breeze at Dansby Swanson. Until in December of 2015, the Diamondbacks made a move. A very bold move. The Diamondbacks would send outfielder Ender Inciarte, Dansby Swanson, and pitching prospect Aaron Blair in exchange for starting pitcher Shelby Miller. Miller was coming off of the best year of his career with Atlanta, making an all-star appearance and pitching over 200 innings, and the Diamondbacks decided to go all-in for 2016. They signed Zach Greinke to be their ace, and in doing so, forfeiting a first-round pick the following year. As I mentioned, they traded away their first-round pick from 2015 in Dansby Swanson, netting them Shelby Miller. Their rotation would be a combination of Zach Greinke, Robbie Ray, Patrick Corbin, Archie Bradley, and Shelby Miller, along with guys like Paul Goldschmidt and Gene Segura, but they would end up finishing fourth in the NL West and finish with a 69 and 93 record, of course, missing the playoffs. Zach Greinke would be the only pitcher in that rotation with an ERA under 4.9, 
and Shelby Miller would only pitch 101 innings to a tune of a 6.15 ERA. And in his entirety with the Diamondbacks over three years, he pitched 139 innings total with the 6.35 ERA. Moral of the story, this is a franchise changing trade for both teams. <laughs> hey guys. Uh... Dan's beat a go from Vanderbilt and then the number one pick overall and then getting traded last week. What's this whirlwind of an experience been like for you? Uh, up and down. I mean, it's been wild just from the College World Series, the draft, the negotiations, uh, you know, going out to Arizona, and then I don't know if you guys know, but I got hit in the face, so then I was out for three weeks uh, with a concussion, and then um, go and play, and then I get traded to my hometown team. I mean, obviously very, very thankful for, you know, the Diamondbacks opportunity that they gave me, and, um, you know, it's an even better one going back home, so it'll be uh, good to be around the ones I love. In 2016, Dansby progressed through the Braves farm system, and he met up with Ozzie Albies in double A, so they could get their chemistry down for a second base shortstop combo. And then on August 16th, he got the call. Dave brings up Dansby Swanson. Georgia. Number two, Dansby Swanson. All gathered in Arizona for a workout. Line drive. There's his first big league hit. Dansby finished 2016 with a 302 batting average and had at least one hit in 25 of the 38 games that he played in. Dansby was the only Braves rookie to make the 2017 opening day roster, although he had a slow start as he was batting 185 and committed 11 errors at shortstop by the end of May. So Dansby was sent down to AAA just after Ozzie Albies got the call to the bigs. However, after Johan Camargo injured himself during his pregame routines on August 9th, Dansby would head back to Atlanta. Through the rest of that month, he batted 337 and would finish the year teaming up with Ozzie Albies up the middle. 2018 would be up and down for Dansby as he started off the year hot, but hit the 10-day injured list on May 4th and would battle left wrist pain the rest of the year as eventually he would be sidelined in the playoffs and would have surgery that offseason to remove a loose piece of cartilage after batting 238 with 14 home runs in 136 games played. He did, however, have a better year in the field. 60 spin, pretty play. Wow, he covered some ground. Heading into 2019, Swanson was fully healthy and showing just that at the plate as he was batting 270 with 17 home runs and 57 RBIs by the All-Star break. However, in late July, he would land awkwardly on first base and deal with a heel injury the rest of the year. After missing three weeks on the injured list, he would bat just 141 in his first 23 games back from injury and finish with a 251 batting average with those 17 home runs and 65 RBIs. Dansby agreed to a one-year contract with the Braves heading into the 2020 season, and he would play in all 60 of the Braves' regular season games that year, setting career highs in batting average, on-base percentage, and slugging percentage, and his 49 runs scored were third in Major League Baseball. Look at the power from Dansby Swanson. Have a night. He's knocked in five. He goes oppo right there. And Dansby was quoted saying that playing at empty ballparks in 2020 felt like backyard baseball a little bit, and that the lack of audience distractions led players to feel comfortable in their own skin. The Braves would make it to the NLCS for the first time since 2001, but would end up losing in seven games to the Dodgers. Dansby would begin 2021 in a bit of a slump, although on June 3rd, both Swanson and Ozzie Albies both recorded their 500th hits of their MLB career. The remainder of the year, Dansby would have the best power year of his career. He would end up playing in 160 games in 2021, batting 248 with 27 home runs and 88 RBIs. His 27 home runs were a franchise record for any shortstop in Braves history, with their prior record being 20 home runs by Dennis Menke. The Braves clinched the NL East for the fourth consecutive year, and they would end up against the Astros in the World Series. Swanson was going to throw to second, had to throw to first. I'm just saying, God is so good. Uh, I never understood why I was here, you know, or why I got traded here. And there's two reasons, three reasons. Be back closer to family, meet her, and 
win a championship for the city of Atlanta, and all three are just unbelievable blessings. You hit a home run in the clinching game. You get the final out in the clinching game. Is this the storybook ending for a childhood dream? Uh, I reckon. I mean, I don't. I mean, I think there's still more to be written. Honestly, um, this is just part. Of, I feel like this is a this is a chapter, but it's not the end of the book. Um, there's still so much left. Uh, we're just going to soak up and enjoy every bit of this one because it's it's truly it's truly a blessing. A lot of young boys out there playing Little League ball, dreaming of the moment you're in right now. What would you like to say to Atlanta? Oh, uh, always keep the faith. Um, you know, we talk about all the time, God is so good, his, his plan is so good, and just to continue to trust in, and trusting in that is, there's no better way to be. Um, and that's, like I said, that's what's led us to this moment. Our big word for the last couple of months it, as a team was love, and, you know, who better to learn to love from than the Creator? So, wow. This trophy, this is ours, Atlanta. This is everybody's. It might get me in trouble, but re-sign Freddie. Well, as we know, Freddie head west to Los Angeles, and Dansby headed into his final year of arbitration with Atlanta. In 2022, Dansby would be the only player to play in all 162 games as he finished with a 277 batting average, 25 home runs, and 96 RBIs. Goes Dansby out towards center field, heading back at the wall. Oh my goodness! He would also go on to win his first gold glove and make his first all star appearance. Dansby Swanson diving to his left. Robbed Caratini. During his rookie season back in 2017, he met and started dating Mallory Pug, who is a forward on the U.S. women's national team and is currently on the Chicago Red Stars. They would get married in December of 2022, and shortly after it was announced that Dansby would sign with the Chicago Cubs. Now, of course, it'd be nice for him to be playing in the same city as his wife, but there's more to why he signed with the Cubs and left his hometown team. Being a Cub means more to me than people would realize. Um, it's no secret that I left my hometown team uh, to be here, and I've kept telling everyone that it's more personal to me. So Mallory and I got married December 10th. The next morning we found out that my grandfather um, was not doing so well, um, that he was in hospice, and so we pretty much left our wedding venue the next morning, uh, drove home, and basically had to rush over to the senior living facility where he was at. And uh, we were, gosh dang it. <laughs> so he ended up uh, passing away on the day after we got married. And the one thing that just always stood out was he lived across the yard from my parents and I and my brother and sister. And so every day when I would come home from school, I would run up to his house I'd run in and pretty much like demand that he come outside and hit me ground balls, which he would always do. But every time I walked in, he would have a Cubs game on um, back when it was on WGN. And I can't look at my parents. Um, he would have a Cubs game on, and I was always like, Pops, we're in Atlanta, dude. Like, we're Braves fans. And... It was just something he loved baseball so much, and all he ever wanted me to be was doing what I'm doing now. So having won a championship in Atlanta for one of his favorite teams, we just felt that the Cubs, which were his second favorite team, that bringing a championship to this city was just what we have felt called to do. So to be able to play for two of my grandfather's two favorite teams, um, means literally like the world to me, so. Dansby's seven year, $177 million contract with the Cubs cements him in the top of the lineup for the foreseeable future. And with such a young lineup and interesting additions this off season, as well as last, with Cody Bellinger, Seiya Suzuki, Nico Horner's making a name for himself, Ian Happ and don't sleep on Christopher Morrell, the Cubs and Dansby Swanson will be fun to watch in the NL Central for years to come. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll put a link on the right side of the screen to my player profile series. Alright guys, goodbye zone, and don't forget it. <laughs>